Her family is affected by Thursday's inferno in Embakasi, Nairobi, are still coming to terms with the incident. Inves investigations have been launched into the incident that left three people dead and hundreds injured. 19 patients who suffered minor burns were today released from Kenyatta National Hospital, but eight others are still admitted at the intensive care unit with over 50% burns. And as investigations start, the National Environment Management Authority has suspended four of its senior staff said to have illegally licensed the gas cylinder plant at Mradi area. And as Francis Ode Francis now reports, the ownership of the plant is still shrouded in mystery. While the names of the proprietors still remain unknown, their roles in this disaster is under intense scrutiny. Authorities are endlessly pursuing leads, determined to hold those responsible accountable for the loss of lives and widespread destruction. Yeah, Baba Yako, I'm a Jamaica, 95%. Because I'm a Baba, 95%. Nini, 95%? I love my Nyambia Kosa. I'm a Takitari. Before the explosion reverberated through the neighborhood, Austin Shivanda was quietly relaxing in his room a mere stone throw away from the hazardous gas facility. Little did he know on this day that his life would be cut short. When Cleophas Lihanga Blumumba, Shivanda's son had the defending blast. He sprinted towards the epicenter, fueled by desperation to save his father. But what awaited him was a scene of despair, a father trapped amidst flames and chaos. Lihanga recounts his valiant efforts to rescue his father, Twice he braved the searing heat, defying danger and exhaustion, yet fate conspired against them. A government vehicle, perhaps unaware of urgency, left Lihanga struggling to save himself and his burnt father. Kufika kiwango ikile, kuenda mbele, tuluko tumeweka mgonjo kwa gari ya polisi. Kuenda mbele tena, na mpata polisi memushukisha, memweka mali pale. Nika shanga, ayy. At Kenyatta National Hospital, 50 patients were admitted yesterday, 11 were in critical condition, having sustained burns of over 50%. 19 patients have already been discharged, with burns ranging from 4 to 10%, including soft tissues injuries. Currently, 15 patients are admitted to the hospital's special disaster ward. Notably, one of the patients received at the facility is an expectant woman. KNH continues to receive patients referred from other facilities within Nairobi County, while surgeries for some of the fire victims are going on. So far, the National Environment Management Authority, NEMA, has taken action against four of its employees for negligence as they were found to have slept on the job. Preliminary investigations have revealed then procedurally processed a license for the company that did not comply with the regulations. As residents grapple with their losses, investigative agencies have been given a 14-day deadline by the Deputy Inspector General Douglas Kanja to hold accountable the culprits and official owners of the LPG company responsible for the explosion. Legal counsel for the lessee of the premise, Karevi Wandungi, confirmed that the site was used as a garage and the car that trespassed the premise caused the devastating blast. He has denied reports that his client was in hiding. 
As the investigations continue, the community is still in mourning and the rescue tents stand as silent witnesses to the anguish that envelops Embakasi. So the idea is beyond now, beyond the initial phase of handling the injuries and the burns, we're going to do a long-term intervention uh, for livelihoods. And I want to assure Kenyans that we will make sure that the affected receive uh, the supplies in uh, real time. And uh, basically, as we coordinate this, we'll be working largely with the Minister of Interior, who are our grants men, who will be uh, reaching out to the families together with the count government of Nairobi. The clock ticks relentlessly, demanding answers, justice and closure. Ode Francis, KTN News, Nairobi. Meanwhile, President